But I don't know why we call dragonfly nymphs here in Australia mud eyes. We have the spider and we have the cooter, as we call them. And these are a few of the mud eyes that were hatching uh, at a lake called Oberon Dam. It's the closest trout water really to Sydney over the Blue Mountains. Um, and uh, I don't know why it's called o Oberon, but uh, we'll call this a midsummer night's ha hatching. You can see my early, early, early attempts here, I believe, in getting the shape and the size right. Um, and finally, I was, go I was getting the cut, the, the uh, getting my cut, cut colours right as well. Fairy foam is a great material to use because it does absorb the wa water and it hangs this particular pattern nicely under the meniscus. So here is the materials list. We've got an extended, extended body here of burnt fur furry foam. We have an olive deer hair cl cl clump. It's the same clump that extends ar around the eyes over the head. A little bit of, of dubbing here just to co 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 cover up the threads. Uh, we're using three millimetre plastic bead chain eyes because we don't want this to sink all that well. Um, and really any standard size eight hook will do the job. And in case you don't know, furry foam is actually a blanket. Um, and if you buy yourself an Actil Ve Ve Velux blanket, you'll have more than enough fur furry foam to tie your flies with. So there we ha have it, folks. Um, there's a presentation on teaching others. So I'm now going to move to, to um, uh, tying our first fly. So you're able to see here I've got some, and I'm going to place that inside, in, inside my body burner. Now the burner, it, it really just consists of, of um, a big set of tweezers, re re really. And uh, I've sh shaped those to, to, uh, to, to ensure they, that they're the same re really as the body. So we'll place those, place those in there. Uh, to, uh, to save uh, the, the setting off of the fire alarms, we'll just we'll give these a, a quick trim. I'll just uh, uh, remove the... Remove the uh, excess here. There we go. Now, if this was a feather, I just have to hold the burner di uh, directly underneath it, and it would all work. But, but in this case, I'm actually burning around the sides of it, really, just, just to seal the sides. And as I open it up here, you can see there's our there's our body that's already formed. Okay, so we'll move now to uh, pulling our thread. Here comes our, our jam wrap, everybody. And we'll wrap it to about the halfway point. And I'm going to, I need to tie these eyes on with a reasonable gap behind the eye because as you know we're going to wrap these materials around it looks all right so i'm now doing some figure eight wraps or criss crisscross wraps i like to teach it this way criss 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 Cross, 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 cross. Now some H wraps. They're probably bet, 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 better seen from above, so we'll do some more H wraps. And then some horizontal wraps. And there our eyes are to go, and I move to the high end point for the, for the body. And we'll use the body I just burnt. So we'll just place the body on top here. I'm now I'm judging the uh, the length of the body. That 
looks about right to me. I'm now going to pinch wrap. Pinch wrap the body with the hook. A little bit of after the fact alignment. Some tight binding wraps in there. We'll just remove the remove the excess with a nice flat cut and bind bind that down. Now we're right to 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 tie on our our deer hair, and we're going to tip the fly. Oh, out of focus here, are we? Better. Looks good, David. Thank you for that. So we now have our our our, our deer our deer hair clump. Now I'm judging the 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 uh, the size of the clump here is pretty important for this particular fly because it has to fit between the eyes. And I don't I don't want to crowd my eyes. So I'll just remove a bit of a bit of that fluff from our background as well. So we tip our fly upside down. I'm now judging the length, the length. There we go there. And now some fairly loose wraps. I don't want this to flare too much on me at this stage. Got a binding wrap in the middle. I'm putting a little nice loose gathering wrap there and I'm coming back with a binding wrap there. And now I tip the fly back the other way. I'm looking, I'm looking on top of the fly to get an even split of material. I'm ha happy with that. I'm still holding on to those wraps there and we're going to Okay. So now I'm going to apply our dubbing. And the purpose of the dubbing here really is just to uh, just to prove it's me doing the time here, not a robot. I'll turn myself on in the top right hand corner there. So I'm just going to uh, Grab my wax. Wax the thread. And apply my dart dubbing here, which is sticking to the thread nicely. Turning in one direction only, clockwise. Now we're ready to you can see here I'm nice sort of gathering there to ensure it doesn't go out of the way. Then I do a sneaky trick, I bring the thread around underneath and we'll finish this off with. A whip, fit, 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 a whip finish using the half inch tool. And there we have our 